Okay, good morning everybody. It's, it's, I have a little advantage over you today. This is 6.30 for me today in the afternoon, full of energy. So I hope you can bear with me at 5.20 there. Um, okay, we're on Daf Mem Chet Amud Aleph. By the two dots, about nine lines from the top. Amal Rav Yehuda Bered Rav Shmuel Bashilat Mishmei de Rav. Rav Yehuda, the son of Rav Shmuel Bashilat, Bashilat said in the name of Rav. Tisha achlu tagan ve'echad achal yerek. Nine people ate grain, tagan, five species. One person ate a vegetable. Mitzdafin, der mitzdaref. And now you can say Baruch Elokeinu Shachal Mushalah because you have ten. Amar Abzera by my name Rav Yehuda Shmona Mahu Shiva Mahu. If you have eight and two people ate Yerek, or seven and three people ate Yerek, Amale Lo Shna. He said it doesn't matter. It's fine. You have a minyan and you're able to say Baruch Elokeinu Shachal Mushalah. So now the Gemara says, Shisha vada domi boili. There are really two different texts here in, the, uh, in this Gemara. The Bach understood that Rashi had a different text here, but first we'll try it the way that we see it in front of us. Shisha vada domi boili. He says, Six, I have no question. Have you heard this? I have no question. Why? Seems like six is a, a problem. Six and four is not a real majority or whatever it is, but there's some, it's something wrong with the number six. It has to be seven and up. So Amalei Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Yirmiya told him, Shapir Avada Deloi Bailach. It's very well, well, well said that you didn't have a question, but not for the reason that you thought there wasn't a question because you thought it didn't work, but rather the opposite. Hatam time am I mishum de ikaruba. Hachanami ikaruba v'iu ikaruba. The reason why it works when there's nine, eight, or seven is because there's a majority of those who need to say berkat hamazon, and that's why you could be mitzaref. You can join the other one, two, or three. Six is also a majority, so you can join the four as well, and you could say baruch adokein. That seems to be a very logical svara. So the Gemara now explains v'iu savar. But what did he feel? Why was he so sure that it wouldn't work? It's because Ruba de Minka Inan, it has to be a recognizable majority. Once it's six and four, where the majority is only two more on this side and, and four now on that side, that's not so recognizable. You can't really make that out. And that's not a minyan to say Baruch Seven and three is a clear majority. Um, Now, now you have a machloket between Rav Yehuda. Rav Zeyre said the name by me, Rav Yehuda, that says it doesn't work because you need a minkar, a uh, ruba de minkar, a recognizable, clear majority. And Rav Yirmiya would say it's fine, you have a majority. So the Shukhan Aruch says you need a recognizable majority. Uh, majority, which is seven and three. There is a different text here that Rashi learns that he wasn't even so sure. That Abzeir didn't say vadai lo mi He didn't say, oh, I know six, I didn't ask six because I know it's a problem. Rather, he said, I'm upset that I didn't ask about six because six might be different. Even though I asked about 9, 8, and 7, and I got an answer, but 6, I, I'm not so sure about 6, because you might need a clear majority. Which, in that case, he wasn't really saying that he knows you need a clear majority. He was just thinking it might be like that. And the other man, the Rabbi Yirmiya, which was sure, answered him, no, as long as you need a majority. So, if that would be the right text, then Halacha would follow Rabbi Yirmiya. 
where we would say you don't need a clear majority. However, the Shulchan Aruch is posek, like the Girsa that we had, that it's actually a machloket, a clear, definitive machloket. And therefore, he goes lechumra, you take the more stringent opinion here of Rabbi Yirmiya. Now the Gemara says, in a related incident of another incident where we're joining someone into the Zimun that has not yet eaten bread. Yanai the king, in the time of the second Beit HaMikdash, was a very wicked king, came from the Beit Hashmonoi, and he served as the king and as the Kohen Gadol. He also wiped out many of the, most Chachamim since they, all the Chachamim since they, uh, they challenged the veracity of his lineage and got very upset. His wife happened to be the sister of the Gadol Hador, Shimon ben Shatach, who she was hiding, and he wasn't touched by Yana HaMelech. So the story is that Yana Malka, Umalkita and his wife, Krihu they ate bread together. Since he already killed all the rabbis, there was no one there to bless them. There was no one there to bless for them. So, he said to his wife, Who will get a man that can say Bekat Amazon for us? Do you swear to me that if I bring you a man, you will not cause him any harm. Shtabala, he swore to her. She brought her brother, Shimon Min Shatach, Achvua, her brother. Otve ben Didele Dida, he gave him, he accorded him a lot of honor by placing him in between him and her. Amale, chazit kama yikara avdin alach. Do you see how much honor I accord you? Amale, love at komokatli. You are not giving me honor. You know why I'm getting this, all this honor? El oraytahi demokrali. The Torah that I learned is honoring me now. It's not you, it's not up to you. The Torah that I've toiled on my entire life is according to this honor today. Dichtiv salseleha. If you make nice, if you caress the Torah, utrom emeka, it will lift you high. Tichabdeka. It will honor you. Kitichabkena. When and because you hug it. Since I love the Torah and I've caressed it and hugged it, it's honoring me and uplifting me. Oh my Allah. Kachazit lo marat. I see, he said, that you are not accepting my, um, my kingship. Yavu le kasa. And, excuse me, the, Yana Yamelech told his wife, Amala, you see? He's not accepting my, uh, my kingship. He's talking to me that way. In, in the interim, Yavale Kasa, Levruche. They brought him a cup of wine to make Bekat Amazon. Amar, so he said, Hechi Avarich. How can I say Abracha now? Baruch She'achal Yanai V'chavirov Mishalom. What am I going to say? I can't say Nivarech She'achal Nu Mishalom. Let us bless him because we've eaten from him. Because I haven't eaten anything yet. So what am I going to say? Baruch blessed the one that Yanai and his friends ate from? That doesn't sound right. That's not the way you make a bracha. If you're leading the zimun, you have to praise Hashem for eating yourself. So therefore, he said, hold it. Before we begin the Bekat Amazon here, Shati Lehu Kasa, he drank another cup of wine so that he can join now in the Bekat Hazimun. And then he took the next cup of wine and used it for Bekat Amazon. Some say, Some say it's not Rabbi Yochanan, some say it is. 
We'll see in a second. But whatever the case is, Rabbi said, the son of Rabbi Chiyab, Rabbi said, Shimon bin Shotach, the Ovad the Gamehu the Ovad. He was following his own position, his own opinion. Because he is now leading the Zimun. How? How is he leading the Zimun? Because of one cup of wine that he drank. That is a lone opinion. Forever, one cannot be motzi others in Zimun or in Bikat Hamazdon until he eats a kezayit dagan. Bach, ukedetanya. Rabbi Shimon Megamliel Omer, Allah, like Rabbi Shimon Megamliel said, and they knew that Rabbi Shimon Megamliel was the halacha and it was accepted by everyone. He says, Allah ve'esiv imahem. If someone goes up to either to the dining area and reclines with them, afilu lo tavali imahem ela betzir. Even if he only is tovel with them betzir in the brine, v'lo achali imahem. He only had one dried fig, mitzteref. He can join them and they can make zimun and bekat amazon. It's teruf and mitzteref. Rabbi Shimon Gabriel says he can join them. But he didn't go so far to say, Until he eats a kazayit dagan. So we see that Rabbi Yochanan which said that a person cannot be Muslim unless he eats Dagan, a Kazai Dagan is based, is correct because it's based on Rabbi Shem Gamliel. And therefore, Reb Abba, Bred Reb Chiyabar Abba, concludes that Shimon Ben Shatach was following his own opinion, but we are not posseic like that opinion. Now, this really needs a little bit of an explanation since. The halacha is that there's something called avut. Avut means kol Yisrael arevim zelas. They were all responsible for each other. We took an oath on Har Sinai that I'm responsible for you to do your mitzvot and you're responsible for me to do my mitzvot. And therefore, we can always be motzi each other when it comes to mitzvot. Unlike we learned the sugya before of bekat bekat hanehenin, there you need to be koveas siudah lechat chila in order to be motzi. But for avut for bekat mitzvot, it should work. Easily. So why is Bekat Amazon different? Is the Rosh brings a Yerushalmi. The Yerushalmi says that there's an Asmachta that we learn out from the Pasuk, Ve'achalta v'savat v'rachta. An Asmachta is something that the Chachamim relied on. A hint in the Torah, even though it might not be the right to this law. But since it says there that you should eat and you'll be satisfied and you'll bless, therefore they said, Misha achal yivarech one who ate can bless. One who has not yet eaten cannot bless. Whereas all other mitzvot, for example, Kiddush. I can say Kiddush all the time. Even if I already made Kiddush and I don't need Kiddush for myself, there's no chiyuv upon myself, I can make it for you and I can keep making it for whoever needs it. For, because of Avut. However, Bikat Amazon requires the Chiyuv itself, the Kizai Dagan, um, and anything less than Kizai Dagan, like a cup of wine, like Shimon Shadach did, would not suffice. And therefore, that's what they concluded, that he did his own thing. Same as Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, Mitztaref. But ulehotzi et rabim to be motzi and say the kate zimun and mazon yidei chavotam eno motzi at sheochal kezayit dagan. Let's just conclude the Gemara before we add a little insert. Am Rav Chana bar Yehuda Mishmei Drava Hilchita and the halacha is achal ale yerek. If someone ate just a leaf of a green, v'shata kos shel yayin, and he drank a cup of wine with steref. But in order to be motzi, he has to actually eat a kezayit dagan. So, 
seems very straightforward, but Rashi has a, a few points to make. Rashi asks a question. What happens when you eat Kezayit Dagan? What Shi'ur is that? It's not the Shi'ur of Tzvi'ah. The Shi'ur is Kezayit is Midr Banan, like the Gemara said in Davchaf. So how can now, how, if there's a real law that I cannot be Motsi somebody until I myself become Mechuyav, I'm not Mechuyav Midoraita. He's Mechuyav Midoraita and I'm only Mechuyav Midr Banan. So I didn't really eat the right amount. So Rashi says, it's okay. Since you're chayav midrabanan, that's already considered mechuyav bedavar. That's enough. That's enough. And now you can even be called a mechuyav and be motzi somebody that's chayav doraita. Needs a little bit of an explanation because then what was Rashi asking? What did he think in the beginning? What's the answer? Another question he asks is that by a katan, a katan that reaches chinuch, uh, we said that a katan that reaches chinuch is chayav mid rabbanan to say bekat Let's say he's nine, ten years old. The Gemara said in Davchof, he has to say zimun. Yet, he was not able to be motzi, his father, or anybody who else who needed Bikat Hazon, says Rashi, if what I just said is correct, that a Chiyuv de Rabbanan is enough to be called him a Mechuyav, and now he can be Motzi, another person in Bikat Hazon, why wouldn't the Katan be able to? So the Rashi says a Katan is different, because a Katan's Chiyuv is not even his Chiyuv, it's his father's Chiyuv to make sure that his son says Bikat Hazon, but it's not his own Chiyuv. And that's why the child has no chiyuv whatsoever, and therefore he cannot be motzi, anybody with Pekat Amazon. And then Rashi adds one more thing. He brings the Bahag. The Bahag says that this question is so valid, Rashi's initial question, that if he only had a kizayit again, he's not mechuyav midoraita, that it must be that this story here, and this halacha, this halacha is, you can be motzi others when they also only have a chiyuv de Rabbanan. If they ate a kezayit or a kebetza, but not kedei sviyah, which means not to a satiating, to, to the level of being satiated, which is the level that you need to be, to say bekatam, that you're required to say bekatam azon minat Torah, um, then your chiyuv is only drabanan, and then that's where the other person who ate a kezayit again can be motzi. But it's true, says the Bahag, that if the person you want to be motzi ate a Kedei Svi'ah, a satiating amount. This Gemara is not speaking about that. If you ate a Kezayit Agam, you cannot be Motzihim. Rashi does not like the Bahag's Pshat, because Rashi says, one second, we're bringing this Gemara as a proof that Shimon and Shatach acted alone. But the story of Shimon Shatach with Yana and his friends, they ate and they were satisfied. They didn't eat a kezayit. This, this was a king. He ate a real meal. Um, and the Gemara still says that the reason why Shimon Shatach was not able to be motzi, Yana and his friends, was because he didn't eat a kezayit dagan. He only drank a cup of wine which indicates clearly that had he eaten a kezai dagan, he would have been able to be motzi yane v'chaverav, which ate a full amount of food, a satiated amount, and therefore, Rashi says that it must be that his own pshat is correct, where once you mechuyav to say bekat hamazon, midirabanan, that's enough of a chiyuv to be able to be motzi others. Let's continue the Gemara on Amud Bet. Amarav Nachman Moshe Tiken li Yisrael Bekat Hazan Bishah Shayad Lahem Man Moshe affixed for Kla Yisrael the first bracha of Hazan at Olam at the time that the man fell for them. Kulo betuvo b'chem b'chesed v'rachem 
Hashem is done everyone, even people in the Midbar, miraculously lived like this for 40 years. So he made up this bracha, the first bracha. Yehoshua tiken lehem bekata aretz. Yehoshua made up the next bracha, which speaks about thanks for the land. Ala aretz atova, baruch ata Hashem, ala aretz amazon, nodeh lecha Hashem, kenu, al eretz chemda tova uruchava. And he made up this bracha. B'sha'ah, the Bach inserts, she'nichnesu la'aretz. David and Shlomo tiknu b'nei Yerushalayim. They collectively were mitaken the bracha of b'nei Yerushalayim. David tiken al Yisrael amechal al Yerushalayim irecha. Meaning, have mercy on Yisrael amecha and on Yerushalayim irecha. Ushlomo tiken al abayit agadol v'akadosh. Once Shlomo already erected the Beit HaMikdash, so now he prayed for the well-being of the Beit HaMikdash itself. Now, before we continue the Brayta, it's clear that Bekat Amazon is the Oraita. So Bekat Amazon is the Oraita. It, it happened before Moshe and Yeshua and David and Shlomo were mitaken, these Nusraot. And the answer is yes. Midoraita, there are three brachot. You have to thank Hashem for the food, for the zan, for the aretz, al aretz atovel, as we'll see soon in the brighter. And we have to thank Him for Yerushalayim and, and pray for Yerushalayim. However, the exact nusach of what you want to use, that was not, that was subject to what, basically what it probably whatever you wanted to say. It wasn't an exact science. Until Moshe Rabbeinu was mitaken, this is what we should use. These specific words, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokim Elohim, Hazan et HaOlam, Kulo B'Tuvo, B'Chem Echaz Rachem. And so, so, so on and so forth for Yehoshua and for David and Shlomo. Hato ve'amitiv, now the fourth bracha, B'yavne teknu ha'kneged aruge betar, was decreed in Yavne, in Rabbi Gamliel's betin, Keneged Haruge Beta. For those who were killed in Beta at the end of the second, in the times of Bar Kokhba, uh, when the, his revolt, and he was defeated, and the Romans killed out the whole city of Beta, and they left him there. All the corpses were just lying there, not buried. And many, many years went by until Rabbi Gamliel and his Beta prayed, and miraculously they were allowed to bring them to Kvura, and the miracle was that when they found them, they were all intact. And they were thanking Kadosh Baruch Hu, that he's a tov and metiv, and therefore they, they made this fourth bracha. The Amar of Matna, Oto Hayom Shenitnu Haruge Beta, the Kvura, Tiknu Biyavne, a tov and And what, how does it refer to this nace, this miracle? Hatov Shelo Yisrichu. How good is Hashem that they did not rot and he gives good to us that he allowed them to come to Kvura. This blessing, what does it have to do with um, why was it placed here next to Vnei Yerushalayim? The Beit Yosef says because what really the message is that until Yerushalayim, whatever is left, all the remnants that were left of Yisrael after the Churban Beit HaMikdash in that era of Haruge Beta, when the second Mesamikdash was destroyed, all of the remnants, us now in Galut, will only, although we thank Him for the miracles, but we're only around and we're only, we're here and we're waiting for Uvnei Yerushalayim. That's when the Tikkun will be complete. Amen. But we're not done yet. Tanura Banan. Seder Bekat Amazon Kachi. This is the Seder of Bekat Amazon. Bechah Rishona, Bechat Hazan. First Bracha, Hazan at Olam. Shniya, Bechat Haaretz, Nod Alcha, Al Eretz, like we said before, Al Haaretz Atova, and we ended with Baruch Atah Hashem Al Haaretz Amazon. Shlishit Bonei Yerushalayim. It starts with Rachem, or Nachem, there's another version of it. Rivi'it Atova Hametiv. Uve Shabbat, Matchil Benechama, Umsayem Benechama. There's no need to start or finish anything with Shabbat, the topic of Shabbat, 
you can start the third blessing with Nechama. Nechama is a reference to the third blessing of Uvenei Yerushalayim, that Hashem should, have, should comfort us and rebuild Yerushalayim. You start it and you end it with, speaking about Yerushalayim, Rachem is the beginning, Uvenei Yerushalayim is the end. And, so where do I insert anything about Shabbat? I placed Kiddushat Hayom, the prayer of Ritzei Hashem Elokeinu, which speaks about Shabbat, inside the third bracha. I don't have to have a separate bracha for Shabbat in the Bikat HaMazon. Rabbi Yezer Omer Ritzal Omra Benechama Omra. You want to say it in the third one? Okay, you can do that. I don't have a problem with what the Tanakhama said. But, Bivikat Haaretz, if you want to say it in the second bracha, you could say that too. Not like the Tanakhama Omra. Bivracha Shetiknu Chachamim Biyavne. Omra, you want to say it in the bracha that the chachamim were mitaken in Yavne? You could say it there too. The chachamim omrim, eno omra ela benechama bilvad. Wherever you want to insert, uh, say, the Rebbe Yazid said you could do it. The chachamim say no. Only in the third blessing. Chachamim, so the Gemara asks, chachamim hainu tanakama. The Tanakama already said that opinion. The Rebbe Yazid was the dissenting view. And now the chachamim say again, What's the difference between the Tanakama and the Chachamim at the end? Ikebenayu di Avad. Which means, according to the last Chachamim, they said, Ela ben Nechama bilvad. They spoke very strongly. Eino omra, Ela ben Nechama bilvad. There's no way. Which means, even if you made a mistake and you said in any other two brachot, you have to repeat it again in the third bracha. There's no way out. Whereas the Tanakama said, look, the right place is in the third bracha, but if you made a mistake and said it anywhere else, not anywhere else, but in the second or fourth, as well, Bidiavad, it's okay. Tanura Banan. Minayin the Bikata Mazom in Atura. Shenema Vachalta Vistavata. Now, the Vilna Goyan's Gisa will take the Vilna Goyan's Gisa here. Since I don't see one in Rashi here exactly. And the Vilna Gaon says like this. V'chalta v'stavata uverachta zubikat hazimun. Switch it around in the Gemara. Not zubikat hazam, but zubikat hazimun. Et Hashem elokecha zubikat hazam. Which means, you eat, you're satisfied, bless him. Say baruch shochalim shorov tovoch hayinu. Then it says, Et Hashem Elokecha. It adds, obviously it's Hashem Elokecha, but it adds those, Et Hashem Elokecha. That is Zubikat HaZimun. Excuse me, Zubikat HaZan. That's the first bracha. Right, we're going with the Vilna Gon's Girsa. That is the Bikat HaZan, a food. Al Ha'aretz HaTova Asher Natalach. So from each one of these words, we'll derive another, another bracha, Al Ha'aretz. For the land, Zubikat Haaretz, that's no delcha. Hatova, the good land. Zubone Yerushalayim. How do you know that thanking him for the good land, the good part is Yerushalayim? The Chayno Omer, Hahara Tova Zeva Halvanon. The great mountain is referring to uh, Yerushalayim, the Halvanon, the Beit HaMikdash, but the good mountain is a, is a reference to Yerushalayim, so we see that Yerushalayim is referenced as good. Therefore, ala alza tova is a chiyuv to bless for Yerushalayim. Asher natan lach, that he has given to you zu hatova amitiv. Oh, so we see here that hatova amitiv is the oraita according to this brighter. So we'll see a dissenting view, but this is a new chidush. Because it's now, what does asher natan lach have to do with um, Atov HaMetiv. Because he's Tov and he's Metiv, everything that he gives us. So we thank him for For everything, Gemalanu, Gomleinu, Yigmeleinu, Atov, Amitiv, Lakol. For everything, Hashanat Alach, that's probably a pshat. Um, 
Any other akhira, the fanav minayim. Okay, that's very nice. You be kata mazon after you eat. How do you know you have to make a bracha before you eat? Hamotzi lech minaretz. Amit kavachomer. We had this kavachomer before. Kishu saveh mevarech. If he's full and he has to bless Hashem to thank him for his satiated state, kshu ra'ev lo kol sheken. And he's coming to get rid of his hunger through the creations of Hashem, Rashi says. Isn't it all the more so that he has to thank Hashem even more? Therefore, we know it from a Kavachomer. We can derive from a Kavachomer. Now, the Vilna Gaon's guess is Divrei Rabbi Ishmael. Rabbi Akiva Omer, otherwise. Rashi seems to have Rabbi over here. Whatever the case is, Rabbi or Rabbi Akiva Omer, you don't need the Kavachomer. We actually have a Pasuk to teach you that you make a bracha before you eat. Where do we see that? It says, Add the word, Et Hashem Elokecha, the Vilna Goyim. Zubikat Hazdan. So he's learning from the whole beginning of the Pasuk. That's the first bracha of Hazdan. Ava Bikat Hazimun, Migadul Hashem Iti Nafka. That you learn from Gadul Hashem Iti. And we mentioned this the other day, that it's seemingly Rashi learned Gadul Hashem Iti Uniroma Shmeach Dav to know to teach us how we know that the magical number is three, but not for the actual chiyuv. That would concur with the first b'raita that we brought, the first opinion in the b'raita, maybe it's Rabbi Ishmael, that we actually learn the chiyuv zimun from the achalta v'sarata uverachta. But now Rabbi Shita, or Rabbi Kiva Shita, whoever Shita this is, is learning zimun from Gadul Hashem Iti directly. So that's where the chiyuv is derived from and the magical number of three. Now, what does this have to do with the fact that you don't need the kavachomer of the bracha of Hamotzi before? What it has to do with is very clear, as it will soon be made clear, is that according to Rabbi, we're already, we're using gadud Hashem Iti to teach you bekat ha-zimun. So now you have some, some extra words to work with to derive a new teaching. And follow this. Now we're up to the word Allah Aretz in the Torah says, Rabbi Zubekat Aretz. HaTovah Zub B'nei Yerushalayim. V'chein hu Omer Hohor HaToiv Hazdeh V'havonon. Right? Like we were before. And HaTovah HaMetiv You don't need the words Asher Natan Lach either. Why? Because B'yavne Tiknuha This is not derived from a Pasuk. It's Midr Abanan. Rabbi Gamliel and his Beitin um, fixed this bracha. And then Rabbi says, Ein li el ala the fanav minayim. How do I know before? Tamud lo ma, we still have three words left in the pasuk. Asher natan lach. Mishen natan lach. From when he has given it to you, begin to thank him. Okay? So, from the moment that he has given it to you, before you devoured it, thank him. For it's consumed. Rabbi Yitz, so therefore you don't need the kalva chomer. You have a pasuk. Rabbi Yitzchak Omer, I don't need that pas. I don't need the kavachomer because I read Omer uvarechet lach mecha ve'et mecha. It says if you va'avadetem Hashem alokechem if you serve Hashem uvarechet lach mecha ve'et mecha and he has and he will bless your um, and he will bless your bread and your waters. I'll take you uvarech and he will bless el uvarech. You're able to read the word since it doesn't have a yud there as a command. You shall bless for your bread and your water. When is it called bread? Before you consume, before you digest, before it's inside of you. Therefore, there is where we derive with Allah Kavachon from the Pasuk itself, the Chiyuv to say, Bekat HaMotzi. Abin Atan Omer, Eino Tzarich. You don't need the Kavachon because we have another Pasuk. Harei Omer, Kivoacham Ha'ir, when you come to the city, now what, let's give a little background. Shmuel anointed Shaul to be the first king of Klai Yisrael. And how did he end up, how did Shaul bump into Shmuel? Akadosh, Akadosh Baruch Hu, the turn of events was as follows. He was looking for his father's lost donkeys. His father's name was Kish. And he couldn't find them. As he came to the city, he asked where is the prophet? We need to speak to the prophet. And there were young women there that directed him and said, 
When you come to the city, you'll find him there. Before they go up to the Bama to eat, because there's going to be a festival today, and they're going to bring Korbanot on the Bama. But before anyone eats, you'll find him there. Why? Because nobody will be eating before he comes. Because he will have to bless on the Zevach. And Achrechein Yochlu Hakruin. And only afterwards will the invitees, invitees eat. Now, that's a very, that's a very, that's a Jewish direction. Yeah, it takes a little, so, it took a long time just to say, go there. You'll find him there. So, the Gemara asks, the Kolkach Lama, Lefisha Nashim Dabraniyotin. Because the Nashim speak a lot. That's answer number one. Shmuel Amar, Kideli Stakel Beyafyo Shel Shaul. They wanted to gaze at Shaul's beauty. He was a shoulder from the shoulder and up than anybody else. He was very handsome. Because since there's a specific moment when Shaul had to take over the reign from Shmuel, it was being passed from Shmuel to Shaul to be the leader of Klai Yisrael, he, Shaul was not able to touch even by a hair's breath into Shmuel's reign. And therefore there was that moment, whatever moment it was in heaven, would have happened earlier had these few seconds of extra words not have taken place. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to delay it until it was the exact right second for his uh, kingship, kingdom to, to, uh, to begin. Anyways, what do we see here? We see that there was a bracha on the korban. He said he's going to make a bracha on the korban. Now Rashi brings down, what's the bracha that Shmuel would make on the korban? And everybody would wait for the prophet to make the bracha on the korban. So Rashi says, the bracha would be, Why is it a mitzvah? Because the pasuk says, You shall eat the, the, the meat of the shlamim. It's a command, therefore it's bekata mitzvot, so you have to make it before. And from there we derive that before you eat, you make a bracha. So the obvious question that the Masha asks is how do we derive from here how do we derive from here that there's a mitzvah to make a bracha before you are nene from something that's a brakat that's brakat mitzvot that has nothing to do with brakat anehenin with brakat hamotzi so So I see here in the Abeliezer Moshe Horowitz, it was the, from the Gedolei Hadar in the times of uh, late 1800s, I think it was in Minsk, so he wants to say, that if it was only for the bracha of the mitzvah, then they wouldn't be delayed. The reason why they were delayed was because of the bracha that he said on the carbon to eat it. Mm-hmm. What they really meant was the bracha 
of the Shakol on the Karba or the Hamotzi because the reason why they said the Bekata Mitzvah was because if there wasn't a Bekata Mitzvah and there was only a sha- Hamotzi or a Shakol, he wouldn't have been able to be Motzi them because they're experts in Brachot and it's only for Mitzvah that you're Motzi. And now that is a bracha of the mitzvah, so now it becomes a mitzvah. So once there's a mitzvah involved, then others can also be yotze with his bracha of hamotzi, and that's really what they meant. Okay, needs a little bit more um, time to work through that chidush. But that is the proof. So now the Gemara says, That's only Torah. How do you know Bikata Torah? From the Torah. If he makes a bracha on things that give him life for the hour, for the time being, for food, that for things that give him life for the hour, for the time being, food, what about life in Olam Abba, which is Torah, for sure. You don't need that because that I give to you. What is that referring to? The Torah What does that mean? That I give to you is referred to in another pasuk. I will give to you, and what, what's the reference? Torah and mitzvah. Therefore, you shall bless Hashem. Asher matan lechad the Torah. Rabbi Meir Omer minayim kishem shekishem shem varech al tovah kach mivarech al ar'ah. How do you know? Not only whatever you learned from the pasuk, but even there's another derivative here in this pasuk that just like you bless Hashem for good, you must bless Him for all that bad. Tamud Omer Asher matan lechad Hashem elokecha. Asher. Whatever Hashem has given to you, whatever He has meted out to you, ben midah Torah or ben midah puranot, whether it's good or whether it is bad. Rabbi Yehuda ben Meter Omer enot zarich. We don't need that because Haray Omer tova hatova. The word hatova already is kind of extra. Because we know it's Tova, since it says Tova later on, it describes the er- Eretz. So saying the word Tova is already extra, and saying Ha Tova, the good, is the double extra. So therefore, Tova zu Torah. Tova already adds, it brings the Chiyuv to say on Torah, the The Torah is called a great buy, a good buy. Ha Tova, the Tova zu Binyan Yerushalayim, that is the building of the Beit HaMikdash, V'cheinu Omer, Ha'har HaTov HaZeh V'halvanon. As it was referred to before, the HaTov. So the good is Yerushalayim. The word Tov itself is a reference to Torah, Askilakach Tov. And that's where the Chiyuv is derived from. Chazak Baruch, thank you very much. Great day.